Enrique, we want to welcome you to New Covenant Grace Fellowship in Inverness, Florida. Hey, we're, we're just really excited around here today because um, most of us were able to turn our air conditioning off last night and sleep with our windows open. Huh? That was the first time in months that that's happened, and that was just a real good, good thing to do. But uh, we're, we're thankful that you're with us and you're watching today. Um, I want to uh, share something that uh, I believe that is uh, kind of pertinent. And uh, to be honest with you, a little bit, um, well, a little bit controversial. And, uh, you know, as you well know, I'm not too afraid f from uh, going into controversial areas. But uh, this is probably the one area that's probably given me the second most amount of grief that I've received ever since entering into the concepts of New Covenant Grace Fellowship. But I, I believe that it's, it's very, very important. Um, I want to talk to you about worship this morning. And I want to um, ask, and this is for not just us, because I know what our worship is around here, but I want to ask you possibly who are watching today, is your worship old or new covenant? Is your worship old or new covenant? And, you know, I know that this gets, again, very controversial, um, it's, I've had pastors rise up on me on this thing, like I've, as I've put things out publicly. Um, I had one pastor, uh, I was ministering in his church on, on some, kind of talking about some of this stuff. The following morning he was picking me up, taking me to another meeting, and he says, by the way, don't you ever say anything more about worship all the time that you're here in my church. And uh, of course, as a guest speaker, I'm totally submissive to that pastor brother if that's that's what you want you know if you want to remain locked up in the old covenant go ahead but that's uh, between you and God and I'm not going to worry about that but uh, so you know there's a whole lot of that you can minister on without getting into the subject but um, he actually told me later on he says you know he says brother he says I think you're becoming legalistic on grace can you believe that and I said guilty <laughs> guilty uh, you know because <laughs> That's true. I mean, it is my life. It's, I, I wrote something on Facebook the other day. Um, some pastors, you know, they'll say, well, I believe in grace, and that's one or two of their sermons um, in their entire lifetime, and, but I believe in grace. Around here, that's all you hear. And there is nothing else around, because it is the very, it is the very presence of Jesus Christ himself. So we, we don't mess around with the subject at all. Um, we are very to the point. But I believe that uh, some of the things that have happened are that we have still allowed some, some of the old covenant coming forth, and even though we're getting bits and pieces of revelation of what new covenant truth is, every once in a while we'll stumble into a little bit of the old, and we'll start mixing it. And here's what's serious about that. Um, Jesus said that a little leaven leavens the whole loaf. A little leaven leavens the whole loaf. So you may have everything just right, and you may be a grace teacher, you may be a grace preacher, your church may be a grace church, but then all of a sudden you enter a song into your congregational worship that may be something like, well, I have to try harder to serve the Lord than what have you done to your message. See, you've allowed some leaven to sneak in. And maybe not deliberately, but you've still allowed some leaven to sneak in. Now, I, I just so appreciate Chris because she tries very, very hard to weed through that stuff. And every once in a while, she'll come to me and she says, well, you know, I've been feeling about this song. What do you think? Is this one that we could play? And we'll listen to it a little bit or look at the words and we'll make a decision. Yeah, yes or no, you know, but... We try real hard. Now, one of our limitations is because we do use CDs, um, we can't change sometimes words. With, with some songs, if you have a live worship band or something like that, um, you can change some of the words that, that need to be changed and make them work. But I want to, to just give you an illustration, and, and it came to me pretty, pretty real Wednesday night because I've been thinking about this. I wrote a blog about this a week or so ago, too. But I was thinking about this uh, actually Tuesday or Wednesday that I, I was wanting to minister on this subject today. 
<clears throat> and and um, because I and here's the, the bottom line. Here's the purpose in this. I want to help you become even more aware of what New Covenant Grace really is. This is not a negative message. Please do not take this as a negative message because it's not. I'm not against a lot of songs, but what I am for is a whole lot of the presence of Jesus Christ in every one of our lives. And so um, that's the purpose of this, okay? And so I was thinking about this, and then Joe ministered Wednesday night, and, and the last couple of Wednesday nights we, we, we used a particular song. And the interesting thing about this song is, is that this song, I'm, I'm about ready for this, Chris, so the, the interesting thing about this song is that the song comes from a noted grace ministry, a famous grace ministry. And um, actually, um, it, and it's not a bad song, it's a good song. I mean, golly, it really ministered to us Wednesday night, and we really got into it. You know, I really got into it. I mean, I was worshiping in it, but, but there's just one spot where I want you to see the mixture, and I'm not doing this to be critical of the song. I'm not doing this, please hear me, I'm not doing this to be critical of the ministry. Please. Because if you think that's what I'm doing here, you're, you're completely misreading the purpose of what I'm about. Okay? But this is a song, it comes from CD entitled The Best is Yet to Come. It's produced by Karis Bible College and Worship Ministries in Woodland Park, California. That's Andrew Womack's uh, uh, ministry, for those of you that know Andrew. And this is a song, this is number 10 on the album. It's called Healing is Here by uh, a man by the name of Daniel Armstutz. And uh, so we want to play this song. And, and, uh, and we want to look at just the chorus at it as, as after we're done playing it, okay? But, but just notice the chorus as this. Now, it's a powerful song. And it was really ministering to us Wednesday night. Okay? But just watch and see, okay? Healing is healing. If my eyes, where my help comes from, 
song. And you know what? We really received a lot of ministry uh, Wednesday night as we were worshiping to this song. But did anybody catch the little glitch? Did anybody catch the little glitch? What was the little glitch, David? That's exactly it. Now this is the point I want you to understand. Grace promotes union life. The Old Covenant religion promotes separation. Grace promotes union life. The Old Covenant, the law, old religion, promotes separation. Now, I was receiving ministry from this song. And I, you know, by the way, we'll probably still use this song from time to time. So to me, it's a tremendous song for the most part. But what we have to understand, and this is the point, this is why I wanted to use it as an illustration, because there's just that little bit of something that, that isn't quite right. And if you guys, in your relationship with God, can understand this totally, 100%, no matter what you're going through, no matter what's happening in your life, that you are not separated from God, that the fullness of God lives within you. There is nothing that you ever can do to become closer to God than what you already are. If you can understand that, then go ahead and raise your hands. I was, Kareem was praying for me Wednesday night, and I had my hands up. I had my hands up. But I, my hands were not 
looking to the hills from whence my help comes, my hands were acknowledging and thanking God for what he did in my life through the fullness of the completed works of the cross in Jesus Christ. And by understanding that, I'm at liberty then to do things and move in ways that, see, what, listen, we don't want to make a law out of grace. We don't want to make it into another law. Some people have done that. We don't want to do that. This is too precious. This is too awesome. But you know what? There's still some truths, and the reason is that I'm using this is that it's a good illustration. Now, let's, let's, let's take this just a little bit step further here. Um, you know, where is Christ? Where is Christ? By the way, Dave quoted the psalm, it was Psalm 121.1. The King James Version says, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence, my, from whence comes my help. That's the basis of the, song, of the song, all right? But where does our help really come from? Turn with me to the book of Philippians, the second chapter. Philippians chapter 2. <clears throat> Philippians chapter 2, beginning in uh, 12. Now, th th this was a real interesting one. When we first started coming into the revelation of New Covenant Grace here three, four years ago, this was, this was really an interesting portion of Scripture because everybody can usually quote this. Um, you know, work out your own salvation with... Huh? Work out your own salvation with... Fear and trembling. Whoa, I got to work out my own salvation. And, we, you know, we, we began to see something there. You know, that is uh, Philippians chapter 2, verse 12. But, but we found that it was very strange that no one could ever quote to us verse 13. <laughs> Isn't it amazing how everybody can quote out the working out your own salvation thing? You know, with fear and trembling, brother, you know. Be they, we can all quote that, all legalistic religious stuff, but very few of us know, even know that verse 13 is in the Bible. The following verse. And what does he say? Paul says this. For God is working huh? in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. Now if God is working in me, giving me the desire to do and, to, to, uh, and the power to do what pleases him, doesn't it stand to reason that likewise so is the healing virtue of Almighty, Almighty God working in me? It's in me. See, the, the wonderful thing about this song that I really like about this song, it's powerful from the standpoint, there's a whole lot of positive declarations. Acknowledging what Christ has already done for us. And that's the point I think that, that I want us to get a hold of every time we use this song. But understanding that you know, God is working in us. We don't look to the hills. We look into ourselves. We look into ourselves. God has done something in us. See, so many of us have this, this opinion of God. He's up there someplace. I'm down here someplace. He's up there in glory. And I'm down here in my mess. Isn't that exactly what Joe was talking about a moment ago, about the Ebola scare and all of the things that are coming against us? My lands, if we would spend our time watching some of that stuff, any, any one of us could shiver away in fear. But if we understand that we're beyond some of that stuff, that there's something more that's within us, you see, that we are kings and, come on, we are kings and priests of who? the Most High God. Here's the deal, loved one. You are in control. I love what Joe said there a minute ago. Uh, I, don't, I don't know how many of you caught that, but he said he felt like the Lord was showing him today if that just one person, just one person, could get a hold of what he was talking about here and just literally begin to declare. Do you realize what could happen to that Ebola plague? It could be completely poof and it's completely gone. And why not? You know, why not? It could be you. It could be you. Are you speaking against the, the circumstances and the situations in your life? Are you taking authority over the circumstances and situations of your life? Or are you just running along with everybody else, you know, tuned into Fox News? Come on. 
Come on. Saints of God, we're beyond that. We are beyond that. We have been born for such a time as this. You have been placed upon this earth for this very moment. You are not just attending a church and, oh, I've just picked up uh, the paper here and just decided I'm going to come to this little goofy church here on, on Thomas Street and whatever. You, you are here because God has a reason for you to be here. And that reason is for you. Just maybe it is you that you're the one that's going to change the entire world by something you declare. Not by something you pray, but something you declare, because there's a big difference. Come on. All of a sudden, that faith is going to rise up. And Listen to me. Uh, Karina and I, when we were young Christians, we attended a church in Holland, Michigan. The pastor, T.W. French, a little red-headed Irish guy, man, a hard preacher, a revivalist, and uh, a lady by the name of Jean Malin. And we, we knew Jean. We, we met her. This, we, this happened actually before we started worshiping there, uh, about a year before we showed up. But we knew the story very well. But Jean had cancer. And it was, a, it was a pretty rough deal. And Jean said to all of the neighbors and friends, if I end up dying, do not let anybody in this house until Fat Pastor French comes in here first. Because he lived not so far away from just, you know, like a 10-minute drive after a quick phone call, <clears throat> and he could be there. Well, the neighbor walked in. She was dead on the living room sofa. All the signs of death were there, completely, completely gone. Pastor French comes in here, oh, now what do I do now, you know? Yeah, it wasn't because he was operating in such faith. You know, it wasn't because he was such God's great man of faith for the, you know, a man of power for the hour type thing, you know. He, he, he was just perplexed and he was afraid. He says, I don't know. He says, and he tells a story. Remember him telling a story. He says, I just felt to kneel next to her and I kneeled on my one knee next to the sofa and I went to lay my hands on her and he said, all of a sudden the power of the Holy Ghost came upon me so strongly and he said, I rebuke that death in the name of Jesus Christ. I commanded death to go immediately right now. And Gene tells the story as he was praying for her the Lord had already began to give her a tour of heaven. And he said to her, daughter, listen, I want you to see this, and I want you to see this for a reason. You have every right, because you've had a hard life, you've had a lot of things go bad in your life. He says, I want you to see how glorious heaven is, and I want you to know this is your place. You can be here, and you can spend all eternity, and if you decide that you never want to go back, that's fine with me because you would be totally 100% in my perfect will to just let death take you home, and, and this is where you're going to be. However, he said, but I do have a purpose for you, and I do have a call upon your life that has yet to be fulfilled. And if you would, if you would go back for a few more years, I want you to know that you will see that call manifested, and many people will come to know the Lord as a result of you going back. Immediately, she said yes to the Lord, and at that very moment of time, Pastor French was, in the name of Jesus, I curse this spirit of death. And all of a sudden, her eyes opened, and she came up off the sofa. Now, here's the true story about this. Jean Malin and Pastor French traveled all over Michigan in that day, bringing and spreading the charismatic renewal to churches, to Lutheran churches, to Catholic churches, to full gospel businessmen's meetings. They would go out every night sometimes during a week, and they were ministering the power of God based upon that testimony, and thousands of people came to know the Lord as a result of what took place, and many of them got baptized in the Holy Spirit as a result. Now see, God has a higher purpose, and when we know that, we can flow in that. 
But it's so important to understand that God wants to use you. He wants to use me. And, 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 you, and if you'd ever talked to her back in that day, she said, I don't understand. Why was I so special? I wasn't such a, she said, I wasn't such a great prayer warrior. Or back in those days, it's all we knew was the legalism. She, she said, I didn't know. You know, why? But, you know, God's ways are not our ways. His ways are higher than our ways. You see, now if I were to say to, to you and I, if I would say to, well, let me just say it to you, because I know where I'm at at this thing. But if I were to say to you, God wants to use you to bring a mighty move of revival into Citrus County, utilizing the principles of New Covenant Grace, you would probably look around and say, who's he talking to, the guy behind me? Because most of us here would not think that we are worthy enough for such a thing. I got news for you. That's just what makes it so special. You don't have to be worthy enough because he already is. See, he already is. Friends, God wants to use you He's got a purpose for each and every one of your lives. And go ahead, speak to those circumstances and situations. We're teaching you here that you are kings. You are priests. You have the right to proclaim and to declare life into every circumstance that you have in your life. All right, so here again, verse 13 of Philippians 2. Uh, for God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. Uh, let's look at Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20. Now all glory to God, who is able through his mighty power at work, where? Within us. To accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. See, now, when we talk about prayer, we're talking about asking and thinking, aren't we? But what does he say here? God is able to do more, infinitely more, than even what we're praying. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. Amen. Um, Colossians 1.27. Again, this is uh, <laughs> one of our famous verses here. But Colossians 1.27, this is what makes the grace message so workable. For God wanted them to know that the riches and glory of Christ are for you Gentiles too, and this is the secret, Christ lives in you. You see this? You are not separated. There is no separation between you and God. See, I'm telling you something, all over Citrus County this morning, I'm going to tell you, this is the way it is. Now, you, you, don't, you may not believe me, but I'm going to tell you, this is exactly what's going on this morning. All over Citrus County, there will be thousands of people sitting in congregations, and they're going to be told, now, you have to do this, and you've got to do this other thing so that you could get closer to God. And what we're saying to our people is, there's nothing you can do to get closer to God than what you already are. How can you get any closer than Christ living in you? Is there any way... Uh, he goes on to say that we're complete in Christ Jesus. So uh, if you are complete in Christ Jesus, is there anything you can do to make you more complete? If we were to pay, take an apple out of the kitchen this morning, and we say, well, we have a complete apple, now what can we do to make that apple any more complete than it already is? See, you're already the apple of God's eye. Amen? It's, you're already there. So it's already there. So Christ in you is the hope of glory. So he goes on to say, um, look at this, he goes on to say, and this is a secret, Christ lives in you, this gives you the assurance of sharing his glory, verse 28, so we tell others about Christ, warning everyone and teaching everyone with all wisdom, all the wisdom God has given us. We want to present them to God, perfect in the relationship to Christ. We want to present them to God, perfect in their relationship to Christ. That's why I work and struggle so hard, depending on Christ's mighty power that works within me. 
Isn't it amazing that Paul's not saying, look to the hills and get your help from the hills. He says, my help comes from within me. Are you all with me on that? Do you see it? All right. Glory to God. So you see, there's nothing wrong with worshiping God with lifting hands, um, even though, um, you know, it's interesting to note that there's only one verse of Scripture that deals with the subject, and that doesn't deal with uh, uh, lifting hands at all uh, for, for worship. It, it deals with uh, prayer, um, but nevertheless, there's, there's nothing wrong with it. Um, but, you know, we, we're seeing that, you know, that if we're lifting our hands up to the God that's up there someplace, then we're making a big mistake. When we were, several of us went to uh, Orlando here a few weeks ago to an Andrew Womack uh, conference, <clears throat> and during one of the famous worship songs, you know, everybody, you know, it was one of those that I can't even remember which one it was, but uh, everybody, oh, you know, and everybody's hands went up, and I really felt like the Holy Spirit said, why, why is everybody lifting their hands to me? And I said, well, I guess they're worshiping you. And he said, where am I? Uh, oh, good point, good point, in me. And, and I, at that time, I thought, you know, I'm going to start doing something a little bit differently. Not that I'm not going to lift my hands from time to time, because I have no problem with that. Again, Paul said, when we pray, uh, he said, I will that all men would pray everywhere, lifting holy hands without wrath or doubting. He didn't say a thing about worshiping. But, you know, here's the point. When some worship leader gets up in the, in the church and says, okay, now everybody lift their hands. How many have been there? Let's everybody lift their hands now. You know, what are we doing? See, we're acknowledging separation. And he's not separated. He's within us. He's within us. So, you know, I kind of do like this a lot of times. I just, man, that's what I was doing this morning, some of the songs. Man, you're, oh God, you're, you're in me. This feels, man, I, woo, you're in me and you ain't going anyplace. And it doesn't depend, on, doesn't depend a bit on what I do or don't do. You ain't going anyplace. You're not leaving me. You're never going to forsake me. You, you, you are in me forever and ever and ever. And it doesn't depend upon what I do or don't do. You just plain love me just the way I am. Oh, does that feel good. That just is like, whoa. That's like a breath of fresh air. And man, I tell you what, when you acknowledge that, that religion is just, it's gone. It's just gone. All right. Let's move on just a little bit here. All right. Depending upon the mighty power that works within me. You know, much of today's worship is dependent upon tradition. And uh, again, Chris, I, I, you know, I, I hope you just declare life into her all the time because you just don't have any idea the job that she does for us. And I know she has actually probably the most criticized position in any church. Worship leaders do. Because <clears throat> some people say, I don't like that song, and I don't like that song. And, you know, it's hard, folks. And I, I've, I've worked with worship leaders that come on a Monday morning and they just cry like babies. You know, they just cave in and feel like such failures because they know, oh, I laid such an egg and no one responded and no one kind of flowed with it. And what did I do wrong? And they get all condemned and beat up. Well, you know what? She's, she's so far beyond that stuff. But yet, it's still a very difficult position to have. And she is working very hard trying to find us the modern music, the songs that are grace-orientated and based upon New Covenant truth. And I think she's doing one whale of a good job, so thank you, sis. Huh? Yeah, give her a hand. <clears throat> but here's what happens. You know, so much of our tradition, we've used this as, as far as uh, worship goes. Uh, uh, this is one of the examples I use in my book back there. I have a whole chapter on this subject. And again, that ca has caught, <laughs> caused me a lot of flack. But uh, I've used a whole chapter on this, and I've used this one illustration. Back in the day, there was a young man by the name of Keith Green. Keith Green lived in Texas. He was a preacher and a revivalist. Uh, he uh, ministered a lot in revival settings. Um, he lived, again, in Texas, ministered out of Texas. Keith considered himself to be a prophet, um, like an Old Testament prophet. 
And therefore, he would talk about himself being very harsh and very stickler, you know, on truth and, you know, no leeway with him. I mean, you know, it was his way or the highway type stuff. And, um, but that, that, that's the ministry that he felt. Well, he, he wrote a song based upon Psalm 51. If you want to turn with me to Psalm 51, and, and I want to just wind this all down with this to just again show you uh, the truth of, of some of these things here. <clears throat> is, this, is this okay, by the way? Getting anything out of this? Is this helping you? Chris says no. <laughs> here I do all that. To lift her up. And what does she do? Just blow me right out of the water. Well, that's the kind of relationship we have around here. All right. Psalm 51. Keith Green, here, here's what the psalm says. Create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew a loyal spirit within me. Do not banish me from your presence, and don't take your Holy Spirit from me. Keith Green put words to this psalm, or music to the psalm. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Well, the church has caught on to that thing, and for years and years and years and years, that song became an old stamp. How many have ever heard that song? All right. Corinne and I, even back in the day when we were traveling, man, we'd get in trouble with worship teams and pastors over that song. Because we said, you know, don't, what are you singing here? Create in me a clean heart? Now, who, who, who lives within you? Who, wh what is your heart? Can your heart, if Christ lives in you, can your heart ever be unclean? How can you create in you what you already have? Well, boy, I tell you what, I'd run into, man, people would get angry. They wouldn't even talk to me because of some of that stuff. I'm telling you, they'd fight over this stuff. And they will, man. Pastors and worship leaders will fight over some of the stuff that I'm teaching. They will literally fight over it because don't mess with my worship, brother. You know, we got, we got, I mean, I've had pastors, well, I've got my worship just where I want it. Well, who died made you God? You know, why, why would you even say something like that? See, a lot of churches, guess what they use the worship for? The worship is their advertising. The worship is their draw. People want to be, you know, they want to worship. They love good music. They love entertainment. And we've made worship in some of our churches just another entertainment event. <clears throat> we're, saying, we're not interested in that. We're interested in the audience of one. And he lives in us. See? All right. Create in me a clean heart, O Lord. He's already done it. Take not your Holy Spirit from me. Will he ever do that? Not. Not at all. He is never going to take away the Holy Spirit from you. I don't care what you do or what you don't do. Guess what? You are secure. <laughs> You're never going to lose the Holy Spirit. You're never going to lose the Holy Spirit. And, and see what he's saying here. So you see, you see what we've done. We've taken the scriptures and, and we've, we've used them. We've misapplied them and put them in a place where we have no business applying them, no, no business using them, and what we've done is created a mess of our thinking and, and created a religious monster as a, a result. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. Well, who, who ever took away the joy of your salvation? You know, I, I get a kick out of people when they say, you know, like, oh God, I gotta got put on the armor of God every morning, brother, and I, my question is always, why do you take it off then? You see? If you've got to put on the armor of God every morning, then you better, take it off. you better quit taking it off every night before you go to bed. That's simple. You don't have to take it off. It's meant to be there, you see? It's meant to be. Well, I've got to, I've got to pray and fast more so I can get the fruit of the Spirit. What is the fruit of the Spirit? Well, I know you can all quote it, righteousness, and you know, but what is the fruit of the Spirit? It is the fruit of the Spirit. Spirit. It's not the fruit of Rihanna. It's not the fruit of Earl. It's certainly not the fruit of Denzel. Amen? 
It is the fruit of the Spirit. It's yours. You can't help but manifesting that fruit when you understand these things that I'm talking about. Glory to God. So what we used to tell churches and worship teams, oh, change the words, you have created in me a clean heart. You will never take away your Holy Spirit from me. You will, and we bring it into what Christ has already done and made it into a new covenant truth. And that's the point, you see, that I want you to become aware of here. Think about, just think about, the little foxes that spoil. Huh? The little foxes that spoil the wine. Amen. And you mix a little law in with grace. Here's a, here's a, here's a Larry law. All right? You can, you can go to the bank on this one. This is a Larry law. Mix law with grace. You always end up with law. You will never end up with more grace. Because, because, because that little leaven spoils the whole loaf. Can you understand where I'm coming from here on this? I'm not being critical of the ministry. Some of us see it, some of us don't. Don't make any difference. Don't make any difference at all. This is not a negative attack. This is not a put down on anybody. But I'm just telling you, this is where it's at. And, and, I, and I want you to understand that this is what we do, because we're going to, from time to time, guess what? We're, there's going to be some song Chris is going to put up here someday, and she's going to be leading us in worship, and all of a sudden, you're going to, oh, it's going to like, the bottom's going to fall out of it, it's going to lay it like an like a egg, and there it's going to be, and you're going to say, oh, and Chris is going to say, my gosh, I never saw that before, that slipped by me. It's, we've used it three or four times, it slipped by me, and, and here's the truth, you see? And, and we're going to do that. We're not the perfect church. We're not. We're going to mess up on these things. But as we continue to work together for the common cause, for the common good, we're going to see some awesome things happen. I'm thrilled with what I'm hearing from you guys, some of the testimonies that I'm hearing and seeing from some of you guys as you're getting a hold of some of this stuff. Your lives are being transformed by new covenant truth. And uh, that's what it's all about. That makes it worth me doing what I'm doing. So, Father, we thank you today. We just plain thank you today for all that you have done for us. From moving in us from the inside out. And we acknowledge that. I about jumped out of my skin when Chris played that song this morning. From the inside out, everlasting, everlasting. Oh, I wish I could remember the words. I'm just so caught up in it right now, I can't. Can we do it? Is it, too, is it possible for us to do it? I know this is totally abnormal. <coughs> but I think this is it. <coughs> and if you can get a hold of this song, if you can get a hold of what it means in your spirit, then you know what? I don't have to say another thing. Because this is the truth. It's the truth of new covenant grace. Give us a minute to get it set up.
God is as close to you as your very next heartbeat. He's living with a good He loves you. And if you never, ever do a thing, never do a thing, that his love for you goes beyond that. So I want to pray for you that are watching this video today. Be blessed. Receive the fullness of the revelation of God's grace. Let us know what He's doing in your life. Tell us what He's doing. Send me an email. Let me know how to pray for you. Let me know how to minister to you. Because we love you so much. God bless you and thank you for watching.